Hey everybody, uh, Jeremy here. Uh, it's Tuesday night and we're gonna create some art. Um, tonight we're working on another Greyhound dog. Uh, this one is also just Dave's. And um, we're gonna use pastel pencils this time, which I'm pretty excited about because I got a new set uh, and pretty nice ones. Uh, this, is, uh, this is very exciting. Um, so uh, I'm gonna jump right in because I don't know how long this is gonna take. I did a test one earlier today. In fact, let me show that off. Um, Sorry, uh, there's going to be a uh, like a video about this tomorrow uh, showing the full process, but uh, this is Guinness and uh, I did him earlier. So I'm like, well, hey, that, that didn't turn out too bad. Let's see if we can uh, do another one, see if lightning strikes twice. Um, this guy over here. Um, so I'm just going to jump right in because uh, Guinness took a little while. And as you saw, he was a smaller uh, dog than what you might find in a Greyhound. But if you guys want to hang out with me, feel free to chime off and chat. I'll keep an eye on it. And um, I'm just going to jump right in. Hey, because I can. How's it going, man? Um, so uh, a word about uh, the paper here. So um, there's, a, there's a technique for working with pastel, paper, uh, pastel pencils on watercolor paper and that's what i'm doing here um like pastel mat is another kind of paper uh, that that kind of stuff is like super expensive so I, i'm doing this really cool technique where um i'm using watercolor paper and then um you know like a, a tone to it and then some clear gesso over the top of it but i'll explain all that tomorrow when i go over how i did my dog um just i just wanted to let you know straight up that um there's a special technique to get this paper prepared for uh, pastel pencil and i'm not going to go into all that tonight i'm just going to start drawing um so yeah and i've got some wine here i'm going to drink the wine while i'm drawing of course uh it's not a bourbon night it's a wine night so because i don't know how long this is going to take i think i'm going to start from the top and work my way down that way at least the face is done um so if you guys have seen any of my uh, pastel pictures in the past, um, there is kind of an ugly phase, but I think it's going to be short lived on these because um, I don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear that? Probably not. I think I have my audio settings uh, turned down too low so that you can't hear these type of things um, because I don't want you guys to hear my dogs barking if they start, start barking. But this this paper is is to is like uh, specially treated to be like sandpaper. And that's the reason why these pastel pencils work really great on this kind of paper. Um, if if I didn't have my audio settings turned way down low so you couldn't pick up on the like little noises, you would hear what sounds like, you know, sandpaper. And it's kind of cool. Like I, I should do one without the audio settings at some point just so that you guys can can hear that because it's kind of neat. I like it. It's like um I will never do ASMR type stuff, but it, it's definitely good for ASMR. I know uh, some people find that kind of noise is relaxing. I, I, I do as well. I don't listen to ASMR, but I can see why people do. But um, yeah, it's got this cool little uh, sandpaper sound to it. It's like if you were running your fingers over sandpaper, that's the, uh, that's the grid of this paper. And like I said, you could use watercolor for pastels and it'll work, but it's going to work best if you have that tooth to the paper. The tooth really picks up on the pastels and, and holds it and locks it in place. And you can get a bunch of different layers in there by using um, um, the clear gesso to add that, that texture to it, that sandpaper-like texture. I mean, honestly, you, you could draw with pastels on sandpaper if you really had the mind to, but... I don't know anybody who does. I'm sure somebody gets in the history of it. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of like lying, uh, laying down light coats of uh, pastel at the moment. And um, then I'll come back in a few and blend that in. But you want to keep it kind of light on these. Um... Yeah, it does kind of sharpen as you go. That's a good point. Um, it, yeah. Uh, in fact, Really, all you ever have to do with pastel pencils, if you're using this kind of paper, um, is is a uh, you know whittle away at the uh, wood. the uh, The pencil itself will sharpen uh, just by using it on this kind of sandpaper. 
Yeah, it sounds like um, there is actual grit here. So the the clear gesso has some sort of like pumice in it. Um, I want to say it's like marble powder, but I'm not really sure. I know it's expensive as hell. Uh, it's like fourteen dollars for like um, an eight ounce bottle at uh, Michael's Craft. I imagine this would work really well for uh, charcoal too. If you're not doing a lot of like smooth charcoal, you, you're just trying to get that charcoal into the paper. But it, it holds the, uh, one, it, it, it grinds off the pigment, uh, which is what you're looking for. But also um, it kind of holds the, that pastel powder into the page, um, allowing you to like add multiple layers. But yeah, it's it's got an actual grit to it. Um, I don't know what the grit is, um, but it feels just like sandpaper. It feels like a very uh, fine sandpaper. It, it's kind of cool. Um, but again, that clear gesso uh, that I used on this, which I, and again, I'll go into that in, in another video, but um, yeah, that crap's expensive. <laughs> but, you know, want to do it right. Um, you could use like regular watercolor. I have in the past and stuff, but you know, it, it's tough. You're, you're limited on the amount of layers that you can put in. I don't put a lot of layers into these things anyway, but, um, it doesn't hold the pastel as well. Like I've used pastel on construction paper and construction paper is like super smooth, but what you're looking for is that, that, um, that, that grit to hold the pastel in there. Like when I, when I do use a uh, construction paper, um, it's got no tooth to it. It's super smooth. The pastel pretty much comes straight off of it. If you sneeze, um, that's no good. Uh, yeah, so like I've been to a couple of different um, Michaels where they don't have it, but you can order it off of Amazon if your local uh, Michaels doesn't have it. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's great. Palette paper for charcoals. I have not. I have not. Um, is that something you recommend? Because that sounds kind of cool. Uh, mostly, I just use regular, um, you know, like, I don't know. I, I usually go for, like, the mixed media paper just because I never just, well, I haven't recently just done charcoal. Like, I always do something else to it. Um, wh whether I'm adding, like, a, like a color to the background or something like that. Um, but it, it's always like the smooth paper that I use for uh, charcoal. Hey kid, how's it going? We're working on a, um, a Greyhound again today. This one, uh, oh, I forget the name of the dog. I should have looked that up before I came on. I'm sorry. We're just gonna call it the Greyhound dog. So again, I'm just applying some uh, like a base layer of um, pastel here. I keep switching things up on you guys. You probably come in here like wanting to watch a uh, watch something on charcoal, and here I am using pastels. But it's fun. I, I like to switch things up. Sharpen pastel. Oh, nice, nice. Have you ever? Um, have you ever worked with that? Let's, what are these? Derwent uh, pastel pencils. I like them. They're super, super nice. Um, like I said at the beginning of the show, I just got a set. Uh, it was donated. It's awesome. And um, I, I, uh, I did a practice run earlier today, and it worked out really well, and I was super happy with it. All right. So anyway, now that I've got this down, I'm going to go ahead and blend it in just so that like these lower layers of uh, pastel, you want them to be like super soft and blended. Um, it's only when you get into like upper layers of detail or whatever that, uh, you know, you can go a little more rough. At least that's the way it worked out in my test, which I, I think turned out nice. Um, in case you're wondering uh, if you want a preview of what that dog ended up looking like, uh, I posted it on the community tab. Any good doggo to, uh, any doggo is a good doggo to draw. I completely agree. I enjoy drawing, drawing dogs. Um, I, I just enjoy drawing wildlife, uh, animals of any sort. 
I guess dogs wouldn't be wildlife, but natural things. Um, I feel like I feel like I know where I stand when I'm drawing a dog. It, it's like I, I have mixed results when I draw human beings. Sometimes it comes out okay. Sometimes it doesn't. But I, I'm getting better at it. I'm I'm, I'm enjoying the process. Yeah, so what I do is um, I just I just whittle away at the wood. And um, like I was telling because I can earlier, because this paper is treated with that gesso and it has that kind of um, sandpaper feel to it, it kind of sharpens itself. Um, I've never run into a, a situation where I need a very fine point. Um, you know, like, uh, there you go. Like this black one here. Um, it's hard to see, but this is not a very fine point, and yet I can draw a pretty fine line with it. It just depends on how you hold it. Um, you know, if you're looking for, like, super fine detail, probably, like, colored pencils are going to be a lot easier to work with when it comes to um, sharpening it. But I like pastels. I like I like that it's super easy to blend. Um super easy to like smooth out with a blending stone. I don't know. I grew up with pastels. It's my thing. Every, every artist has a favorite. I like pastels. I like charcoals. I'm warming up to like paint, but I haven't. Hey, Richard, how's it going? Haven't seen you in a while. How, how you been? Um, I'm warming up to painting, but I found that I am I'm not as good at painting as I am at drawing, so uh, I feel like that's going to take me a while to uh, master. You know, it's not like it's not like actual master painters spent their entire lives learning how to do it or something. I just thought I could like learn it in a month, but so this is uh you know, it is time consuming. But I feel like it's relaxing. There's no dramatic changes in the picture as it goes along. Uh, you you kind of have to watch a time lapse if you want to see dramatic changes. But because like everything's like kind of a slow process. But you guys have seen some of the sketches I've done. It's kind of same with those. You take your time. You put in the details. So this dog has kind of a black coat and white on its uh, chest. And then in the face, it kind of blends into like a little bit of gray. So once I get some of this uh, pastel in here, I'll add some of that. Just kind of want to add a bit. Let me know where everything is. Let me go with uh, this gray here. Oh, been traveling a lot. That sounds cool. Any place interesting? Really, whenever you're traveling, any place is interesting in my book. I like traveling. I don't know if I like traveling. Yeah, I like traveling. I was going to say, I don't, I don't like traveling so much. I just like getting there. I like going places, but that's not true. I do enjoy traveling, like the whole process of uh, getting on a plane, perhaps, or like a road trip. I don't do it as often as I'd like. Yeah, happy to happy to have you in my live stream. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's Tuesday. I, I forget what day it is. I remember this time, but I don't. Like there's been so many times. So like I, I, I've been doing these um, every Tuesday and Friday lately, but I'm so used to saying uh, uh, happy Friday that I forget it's Tuesday. And I, I sometimes say it's Friday night. We're going to draw some pictures. So by treating the paper 
as I did, it, it allows you to add, um, yeah, you can kind of see it in the video, but you're able to add pastel over pastel. So it's really kind of cool. Hey, Mama Q. I'm using black here as kind of like an undercoat, but I think I'm going to switch to this indigo blue just because it's more blue. It's catching the light, and it's more blue than it is black on most of this, so I think uh, I'll switch it up here in a minute. These pastel pictures, kind of like uh, colored pencils, always look pretty rough at first, and then they start coming together and start looking smoother as time goes along. Yeah, it's always nice to take the back roads instead. I agree. I don't, I don't remember if I mentioned it or not. I'm starting with the head uh, just because I'm not sure how long this will take. So, like, if I end up having to finish it up later, at least you guys have seen the head. Just Dave's got the, the most beautiful dogs. But he lives in England, so he, he rarely gets to watch the um, the actual live streams, which kind of sucks for him. I wish you guys could hear this. Uh, the the pencils scraping over the, uh, basically sandpaper. Again, you can get proper paper for, um, for pastels, but I don't know. It's kind of costly. Uh, it's not like that gesso is cheap either, but at least it's cheaper than buying, um, I don't know, like pastel mat or I've never actually used pastel mat. It's, it's uh, so expensive since I, I'm still learning. I don't want to invest a lot of money into buying a bunch of supplies that I'm just going to ruin. Like, maybe if I if I woke up one day and I'm like, you know, I like the pictures I've been drawing lately. Maybe, maybe I'll go off and buy something uh, more expensive just to try it out. I do know when you, when you um, skimp on supplies, like sometimes the more expensive supplies are actually better and they save you a ton of trouble. But, you know, I try to keep it cheap. Like these acrylics that I used to uh, tone this paper, uh, I think I paid like a dollar for a big tube of it. it. Wasn't that expensive. I should do a video on how to, uh, how to find affordable art supplies when you're on a budget. Like if you're basically a student like I am, Trying to self-teach yourself. You don't really want to be spending a lot of money on things that don't work out. Found the best and ugliest Yellowstone decanter. Oh, I, I have to see a picture of that. That sounds awesome. So there's some color in these ears here. But not a lot, just a little bit. And then more gray everywhere else. a lot of time on this here, but I want to get it right. So more important than the details I feel are the tones. So like if um 
you're doing a dog, especially a short hair dog like this, with a lot of light reflection and a lot of shadows. And if you get those right, that's your detail. I mean, there's some other details that you can put in, but you know, the face is kind of small here. This is only a uh, nine by 12 paper. There's only so much detail that you can get. If you had a big canvas or something like that, you'd probably get a lot more detail in there. But we'll do our best. We're gonna, we're gonna get Dalgo up and running with the face. Let's see. I'll end up probably blending or smoothing some of this out here in a moment. Just want to get some basic colors in so it's not all blue. It's not a blue dog. Uh, the reason I chose blue is because, like, um, the dog's coat does kind of uh, reflect the sky quite a bit. And um, kind of wanted to get some of that in there. And then the bottom is actually going to have some um, some grass. And, and it's it, he's kind of on a beach. You don't see the ocean in the background. Or it could be a she. I think this is a she. She's on the beach. I have no idea why Picasso, I, I felt like you set me up for, for a joke. Do you know why Picasso did all the blue paintings? Because he was blue. I, I don't know what the but the punchline is, but I felt like you set me up for a joke. Why did P Picasso do all the blue paintings? So again, this pencil isn't super sharp, but I'm able to put in some pretty fine lines. Just because I'm taking my time and, you know, being careful about my marks. I like Smurfs. <laughs> Don't think Smurfs were around in Picasso's time. What was that, early 19th century? I think that's right. 1910s, 20s, something like that. Maybe not. Yeah, I think it was like 1910s is when Picasso moved around. Don't quote me on that. I don't have the internet in front of me. Oh, he said he had a lot of blue paint. I mean, yeah, hey, respect. I, I, uh, I know exactly what he's talking about. You use what you got. Like, a lot of people think that artists put a lot of thought into these things, and it's it's like, well, you know, what's cheap? If blue, if blue paint is on sale, that's what you use. And it, it may be that, you know, like, he's like, well, I got all these ideas for blue paintings, and, um, you know, there happens to be blue paint on sale today, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with that.
There's a lot going on in this dog's face. Like little subtle details I'm trying to work around. Hey Lorraine, how's it going? So definitely I'm not in a blue mood. I'm actually pretty excited about these pencils. They're super great. Um, the only reason why I'm using blue paper today is because that's what the color it is. Um, the sky is blue. Blue is reflected in the dog's coat. Draw what you see, right? Oh, I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but I, I got another little friend here watching over. Um, little baby Yoda there is using the force to make sure my picture comes out all right. Because, like, I was a little nervous, like, oh, man, I don't want the picture to turn out terrible. So baby Yoda was like, I'll help. Well, he didn't say that. He did. He can't talk. Even though he's 50 years old, he never learned how to talk. And that seems like a plot hole. I feel like if, if Baby Yoda is 50 years old, Baby Yoda should know how to talk. I guess maybe they could make the argument that um, his vocal cords hasn't developed or something yet, but that doesn't seem like, that doesn't seem reasonable. I don't even know how that works. So, like, if Baby Yoda is 50 years old, what are they saying that, like, he progresses slowly or something? Because, like, that's 50 years of life where he's been doing stuff. He didn't learn anything. And if that's the case, when they try to teach him to use a lightsaber, it should take him 10 years to learn how to use that lightsaber. <laughs> My dog's over here groaning. They didn't think that was funny. A lot of little structures in these greyhounds' faces. Because they're like so thin. I don't know if all greyhounds are. I, I've, I've actually never met a greyhound in person. Um, these are former racing dogs. I think. Um, so, I don't know if it's because they're racing dogs that they're just super skinny, but you see all the bone structure. All that blue covered up. Usually I listen to music while drawing. I'm going to have to subscribe to some music service to make you guys listen to my music. Sometimes <laughs> people stop watching. <laughs> I don't know. I think my musical um, tastes are decent. Like usually the music I choose for like shorts and stuff are, is actually the music I listen to. Yeah, they're like, they're very aerodynamic. They're like airplanes, little airplane dogs.
That's why they're race dogs. No wind resistance. I wonder if that's actually the reason why. Like, I wouldn't think. I wouldn't think a Chihuahua would have much wind resistance. I guess a Chihuahua's got little stubby legs. It's not going to run very fast. All right. Let's see if I can get. What's going So how's everybody's week going so far? It's hard to believe it's Tuesday already. I, I don't know what happened to Monday. Um tomorrow's gonna be Wednesday. That's that like that's even weirder. Like I feel like this week is going by too fast. I mean, usually it's a good thing when weeks go by very fast because, like, then it's Friday sooner, but I haven't got anything done this week. I haven't got any of this stuff done. I always start off, like, Monday with, like, all these grand plans, and I have them all written down, and I'm um, pretty excited about the week. And, uh... I don't know. Usually about Tuesday, things start going off kilter, and then by Wednesday, Thursday, I'm playing, trying to play catch up, and then by Friday, I'm like, yeah, it's done, it's over. I... Um. So anyway, what the process is here, in case you haven't noticed, is I'm just going over and over places multiple times trying to get that pigment into the paper not so worried about detail although I'm starting to add a little bit as I go more about just getting that color in there and uh, getting those forms in there really because like you know I started off with the sketch which was just basically lines now I actually have to build structure in this animal catch up and get the poop in a group. I like that phrase. Get the poop in a group. Might just be how it rolls off the tongue. I wish I caught this dog's name. I'd like to refer to her by her name. He told me her name too, and I just, it's not good with names, whether they're dogs or people. It's a nice little nose there. I think I did a good job on that nose. It's like a real dog's nose. So, like, I wish I could zoom in, but I'm not set up for that. But again, you don't really have to sharpen these pencils, just using them kind of keeps them sharp, but also. If you use the edge of the pencil, like if you keep it rotated as you're going along, you're going to get that sharp edge that you can use to uh, put like details and fine lines and, and so on. It is nicer than saying you get your shit together, but you know. I think most people will forgive you if you said get your shit together. They know what you're talking about. Of 
where did Pickles go? I feel like Pickles had a lot of good suggestions for art stuff. Gonna have to holler at him or her later. Like a good tootsie. Are we still talking about getting pooped together? <laughs> That's funny. So I got a little stray Eric thing here, and I don't want it there. Let me see if I can lift that up. Yeah. See? Because I'm keeping it so light. There we go. Like that one little line was bothering me, even though it, it doesn't really matter. No one's going to sit there and say, oh, you put an extra line in that shouldn't be there. I don't know. I at least try for accuracy. Well, Just Dave's uh, last dog that I drew was uh, not spot. So... Yeah, art is better than sport ball. Thank you, Mama Q. I appreciate that. I try to watch sports, but there's just so much going on. I can't keep track. Like, I don't know. Like, people keep all those, like, scores and stats and stuff like that in their head. And I'm like, man, I got I got so many other things to keep in my head. I, I ain't got no room for sport ball. I don't have anything against it. I get the appeal. I mean, it is pretty exciting sometimes. Like, I, I do I do watch all the pop culture ones, like, I don't know, like the Super Bowl and the World Series and stuff like that. But if you ask me now who I thought it was going to go to any of that, well, I don't, I don't think football's going on right now. But if you ask me anything about any of that stuff, I'd be like, I don't know. That's a nice ear flap. I'm making commentary on my own picture as I go along. That's a very nice ear flap, Jeremy. Well, thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate that. You know, you're really good at doing ear flaps. You know what? I appreciate you noticing that I'm good at doing ear flaps. You should do more ear flaps. Why draw a full dog when you can just draw a bunch of ear flaps? Well, Jeremy, if you only draw ear flaps, people are going to stop watching your show. A lot of time just on the face. Well, here's the focal point. Let's see. Um, gray up in here. Right, it kind of goes more up in here. Get in there. Almost done with the face, and then we can move on. Yeah, I talk to myself all the time. Well, it, if I'm not talking to myself, I'm definitely talking to my dogs. I, I talk to my dogs all the time. Um, and I don't see anything wrong with that. They seem to enjoy it. Uh, I know that when I'm talking to them, they think that they're going to get a treat out of it or something like that. Except the T word. Okay, they're sleeping. Don't want to be saying the T word in this house. All right, that looks like a face. Get some more gray value going up in here. I think, I don't think this is an older dog. Like, there's some gray in here, but I think that's just part of its natural markings. I don't know, though. 
if just Dave was here, I would ask. I would I would also ask him, um, you know, what's her name because I forget. Hey, Rubber D. How's it going? Just drawing a Greyhound dog. Pretty Greyhound dog, too. All right. I feel like there's some more shade and tone and all of that jazz I can put in the face. But I did kind of want to move on a little bit so that that's not all I'm doing. This actually should go down a little bit further. This is the dog, the, the two of the dog's um, collars. So, like, it's got one collar for walking. It's around the upper part of the neck, and then it's got another collar down here. I need to remove this line because it's not supposed to be there. There we go. There's definitely some blue up in here. There we go. I forgot to try this one. All kind of look really white. Yeah, I think that works. From the south of Illinois. Ben was wondering if anyone was from Chicago earlier. Yeah, that's a nice adjustment. Let's see if I can get some white in here. Cool. I like it when things work. And this is the... I'm going to call this a belt instead of a collar. 
This is practically a belt. I think Chicago, it's maybe five hours for me. Maybe a little bit longer. Definitely a day trip. Yeah, I think it's going to be more like six or seven hours. So I'm sorry about that. I don't know why I'm apologizing to you guys. Are you guys out there? A lot of powder. All right, let's see. I'm glad I started with the head because I don't know how much of this I'm actually going to get done in one session, but I'm in it until it's done. Um, the last picture I did um, in colored pencils took like five hours. I'm not going to do a five hour live stream, but I am going to get at least the head done. Some of the body. I do want to put in like some background and, and so forth at some point. That's probably the part I'll skip if I don't get time. So back to how this all works. So like you just kind of like lightly go over the paper because it's sanded um, or has that sanded paper texture. It kind of just picks up the pastel you don't have to press very hard unless you're getting into like really heavily shadowed areas where you want to put down like a lot of pigment but for the most part you just kind of lightly go over it and it kind of takes care of itself you do have to work it quite a bit and put in multiple layers as you go like once you blend it out, that's that's a little bit light. So is up here. We'll fix all of that. Kind of at this stage, I just want to make sure that all the places have the right color and then I can refine those colors if I put in more detail. I 
could just kind of work it a little bit. Like right now, I mean, it looks like a nice gray dog, but it needs some more, 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 more to get to be a highly detailed black dog. Like while I'm working, I have like a whole handful of uh, pencils in my hand. But that's the way it usually goes. Let's see. So the color is a little interesting because it does have some unique features. See if I can get those in there. Just kind of cut this little chain. You can't really see that very well on camera, but I can. Hey, Packer. How's it going? How's your week going so far? Been to any conferences lately? Just drowned a doggo. Um, this one's a greyhound. It's one of uh, Just Dave's greyhounds. I really like drawing his dogs. They're cute. I like drawing anybody's dogs, honestly. I'm not going to discriminate. So there's some like cool little. I'm gonna I'm gonna draw it in black first, and then come over and see if I can come over it with color. And I think that might be most effective. I think that'll work best. There's a buckle of some sort here. And it kind of goes into this row of shapes here. There are four of those. One, two, three, four. So divide it into four sections. I'll draw the shapes later. Like this is like ultra detail. Like this is completely unnecessary. Basically, if you're drawing a picture, you as the artist can decide, or maybe the client decides, um, but somebody decides um, how much detail to put in and how much to ignore. In this case, I think I'm putting in an excessive amount of detail on this, uh, this collar, but I like it. I mean, it's got colors in it. It's pretty cool. If you're going to be working in colors, might as well put all the colors in. So when I get to that part, I've got some colors picked out that I think are going to look cool. Yeah, hit that like button. Thanks, Crump. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. That's about all you can do. If you like dogs, hit that like button. Because I represent all dogs. I don't even know what that like button does. Does that make the video do better or something? I, I know nothing about YouTube. Recently, I don't I still don't understand why this is. Recently, like my shorts that I've been posting end up getting only like a handful of views. I think the algorithm's broke. I don't know how the algorithm works, but whatever the algorithm is, it's it's broke. Because I used to get like thousands of views on those things. Now I get like, I don't know, maybe 30, 40. I 
No, I don't think I care though. I'm in it for the long haul. Basically, I'm going to be drawing pictures regardless of if anybody's watching anyway. All right, so let me put these down for a second because I want to put some of these colors in that I see. So he's got this really cool collar. Like, got these pink sides. Sometimes when drawing dogs, it's important to uh, to spend a little time on like things because, like, for all I know, this is this is the dog's favorite collar, right? Like, the dog's got thirty collars, and this is his favorite one. So, like, by putting details in on things like this this uh, this collar, you're helping identify the dog. So, like, dogs sometimes, you know, I don't know, all dogs have uniqueness but sometimes they have sort of generic features right like there's not a lot of variation between different uh greyhounds like there's different markings and stuff like that but beyond that how can you tell one dog from another well they have these like little special things that the owner picked out for them like this this collar has like little stars on it of varying color so if i can put those little like, at least put hints at it in there then i think that that goes a long way towards selling the idea that this is their dog i think i've mentioned things like this in the past i'm having a deja vu moment <laughs> but so it's got some greens in it it's got some pinks it's got some yellows you put all those things in there and it looks like their color all right I don't know what this ring is, but it's kind of a beige color, so I'm going to put that in there, beige or brownish. I don't know what a whip it is, Crump. <laughs> Adopt this dog. This dog's spoken for. This is just Dave's dog. So... I don't, I don't think you can adopt this dog. I think he'd miss it. I don't know what a whippet is. What's a whippet? Well, you'll have to ask Jeff Dave about that. But no, I agree. This dog, this dog seems like it knows something. I agree. That's a super smart dog. You can tell. Um, so my understanding is that this is a Greyhound. Uh, it may be a Whippet. I don't know. You can ask, uh, just Dave. The only, the reason why I think it's a Greyhound is because he's mentioned, you know, having several, several Greyhound dogs. Uh, because he, he's like involved in the horse racing and all that. So that'd be my guess. But I, I really don't know. I have no idea. Lighter for wizard says <laughs> well then it might be <laughs> you guys have distracted me i picked up a brown i don't want a brown i want a white that's funny though it's a 
¿te acuerdas? That wine's so good. Whatever kind of dog it is, it's got this very sleek coat that is fun to draw. Yeah, that's uh that's baby Yoda there. Yoda's dad isn't it, Shrek. They're making up things. I don't know, maybe it is. What do I know? Making up that Distance there. I feel like it wants to make sense. Definitely some areas of this coat is a lot darker than others. Some of it's just gray, but. so weird i'm like learning a lot about dog anatomy like accidentally and human anatomy too like when i go to draw a person oh yeah i know it's little features i don't know what body parts they are <laughs> it's just things i notice like how the light bounces off different things i could uh i could pass a medical exam not a medical exam, but like a doctor. You know what I'm saying. I pass a medical exam. I would hope I pass a medical, medical exam. Oh, I'm in trouble. So there's a little white reflection across the eye here. It's kind of cool. A little bit brighter than I want it to be. Let's see if I can smooth that out. All right, well, smoothed it out, but I think I picked up some of the eyeball there. Put that eyeball back in. Thanks, Grump. I appreciate that. I enjoy doing it. Um, I enjoy watching other people uh, draw pictures as well. Like, I'm the guy who would go to, like, I don't know, street fair, and there's a guy there doing um, caricatures. I'll watch the guy most of the day and forget that I'm even at, a car, at, like, a street fair or something like that. Especially if there's, like, beer involved. Like, a lot of the street fairs around here, you get to walk around with beer. I'll just grab a beer, go watch the, uh, the character caricature whatever however you pronounce it the caricature art <laughs> hold on i can do this caricature caricature yeah that's right caricature artist whatever the hell that is you guys know what i'm saying the guy who draws cartoons the guy who makes fun of you in front of your girlfriend like you go and get a picture at the uh, caricature artist um, and you're there with your girl and he draws your ears like super large like a big old Dumbo or something and you're like oh man my ears really that big that guy that freaking guy you know what I'm talking about
I'm spending a lot of time on this face, but that's okay. I'll, I'll get to the body eventually. Maybe not during this session, but I'll get it done. Maybe this takes two sessions. I don't know. Anything worth doing is worth overdoing. That's not really true. You can overwork a picture. You shouldn't do that. That's bad. Don't listen to me when I say you can, uh, like, anything worth doing. That's kind of like a stock phrase of mine. I use it all the time. Anything worth doing is worth overdoing. That's not true in art. <laughs> you can definitely overwork a picture. You shouldn't. Artist square above the steps to... Oh, I would love to go to Paris, to be honest. Um, I think I told the story about how my parents went to uh, Paris one time back in the 70s on, like, their anniversary or something. And uh, they ran into, like, a, like a hippie on the train. And the guy was like, uh, hey, have you guys been to go to, to the Louvre yet? And they're like, what's that? He's like, oh, that's where they have the Mona Lisa. And, they're, and my dad's like, I ain't the real Mona Lisa, so they didn't go. They they went to Paris, but they didn't go to the Louvre. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. Louvre. Louvre. They didn't go to the Louvre. Anything worth doing is worth doing right. I agree with that. And, you know, art's pretty subjective, but there's definitely a wrong way to do art. I mean, the way I do it is wrong, right? <laughs> there's definitely a wrong way to do art. I don't know what that is, but... I'll tell you the wrong way to do art. If you're not being creative, if you're not pushing yourself, if you're not enjoying yourself, if you're not, if you're doing it just because you have to do it, those are all wrong ways to do art. You should enjoy what you're doing. It should be something that helps you progress as a person. Um, you know, people have vastly different reasons for doing art, um, but I think at minimum, you should be expressing yourself um, being creative, I think, I mean, you know, like some people are like really masters and stuff. And I, I can't imagine they're challenging themselves, but I think people should continue challenging themselves, even if they are masters, like if they're really good at what they do, you should still try to push your, push the envelope and be better because you can always be better, you know, if whatever you're doing. But yeah, so I think that those are wrong ways to do art. If you're just like phoning it in, that's bad. Don't phone things in. Care about what you're doing. Be passionate about it. Those are all good things. If you're not, if you're not really into it, then like, why are you even doing it? Like, I don't know, maybe it's your job or something like that. But if you're not enjoying it, then you should either... Go find a different job or, you know, find some way to make the job a little more creative or, you know, any of the above. I don't know what I'm saying. Bottom line is you should be enjoying yourself. You really shouldn't care what other people think about your art. That, that's true, too. So, like, that's... Uh, a right way to do art is just don't give a shit. Because you're never going to be as good as the next guy, and you're probably better than the other guy. So, it's kind of a wash. Like, you can't see this on camera, but there are some, like, hyper details in this. I, I, I think they're nice. Little little tiny highlights and stuff like that that I'm proud of. Mm. 
Right. Now I think the face is good enough to move on. It's like, what has it been? Like an hour and it's like, okay, the face is done now. <laughs> it's been an hour. Thank you, Chrome. Yeah, like I said, this is uh this is Jeff Dave's dog. So uh if you wanna pay a compliment, let him know. Like I I, I think it's um I think it's a bit late for him over in the UK now. I don't think he's up, but maybe tomorrow or something like that. You know, let him know that his dog is a beautiful dog. I mean I'm sure he already knows, I'm just saying. It really is. Probably more detailed than this actually needs. But anything worth doing is worth overdoing. I'm going to keep saying it until it's true. All right, so I, I feel like I should move on to the body. I do sketch humans to greater or lesser degrees. So, like, if you go to my Instagram, which uh, I, I think there's a link up in the top of my channel, or just look at any of my other videos, I have tried my hand at doing human portraits. Some of them, I think, actually turn out really good. Some of them, not so good. Um, so it's kind of hit or miss. Uh, I definitely do not have any kind of consistency when it comes to human beings. I haven't decided, like, what style. I, it may, maybe I'll try, like, realism, but um, I haven't really decided, like, what kind of medium or any of that stuff I like working with when I'm doing human portraits. Um, or, like, what kind of style or whatever. Uh, so... I'm a work in progress when it comes to human beings. Check back with me later. I would love to go to the loop. I just like art museums in general. Um, I can go into an art museum and me and I can go into an art museum and uh spend you know like a full day in there just enjoying like various pieces the the i think there's different ways to appreciate like art museums right so like some people go in there and they're like not really into art they're just going there they walk through it quickly they look at the pretty pictures they don't really you know they probably appreciate them just because they're pretty pictures and stuff and they kind of just move on you know maybe they're there with somebody and that person's into art or something like that when the artist goes into like an art museum that person is definitely checking out like how did that person do that right so they're looking for tips and tricks and inspiration that's what i go to art museums for i go to art museums just to appreciate really good work and also I'm looking for like, I'm looking to be inspired. Like, how did that person like, um, when it comes to like portraits, human portraits, like John Singer Sargent is like the best, right? So like if I'm at a museum and um, they've got some, some portraits from uh, Sargent, I'm looking like I'm getting as close to that as the security guard will let me get to it because I'm trying to figure out how that guy did it, right? Um, or I'm just look, looking to see like, well, what are they really doing here? Like, what are they trying to accomplish here in this, uh, in this portrait? And I feel that way, um, about like, uh, like a lot of other, uh, artists as well. Like Rembrandt, I love Rembrandt's, um, like contrasts in his, in his pieces. So like how he uses lights and shadows and stuff like that, that stuff mesmerizes me. It's like looking at a campfire or something like that. You know, you can you can spend all night staring into a campfire and not get bored, even though you're just out there staring at a campfire. That's how I feel whenever I look at a Rembrandt painting. Uh, you can see I'm getting excited about it as I'm talking, like I'm more like upbeat about it. And it's just because I really do enjoy going to art museums. Um, so like, uh, oh, you mentioned like Monet. Yeah, like so Impressionism, I really like how... Um, I just like that whole movement, how like if you stand really far back, it looks like a photo. And then if you get up close, it's just a bunch of like marks on a, on a page. I love that kind of stuff. And um, 
trying to think of. So, all right, there is, there is one kind of art that I don't get. So there is abstract expressionism, like uh, like there's a Mark Rothko at the Cincinnati Art Museum. It's been there, like I've been going to the Cincinnati Art Museum since I was a kid, like a teenager or whatever. I used to skip school and go to the <laughs> to the art museum, um, which I feel is a better education than being in school. But anyway, uh, I used to skip school, go down to the art museum and uh, stare at that Rothko. And I don't get it. I know you're supposed to like, I don't know get some sort of like, I don't know, like emotion out of it or something like that. But to me, it's just big fields of color. It's like, I get that it's different than other fields of color. And maybe that's the whole point. But I don't know, it doesn't speak to me like some of the other, like, art that was basically photography back in the day. So not everything speaks to me. But if it speaks to you, that's cool. Yeah, everybody's different. Yeah. What should I put in Rome's mouth drawing? Hmm. You gonna have your dog eat a eat a drawing? Something non toxic. <laughs> Oh, for a drawing. Okay, so like, what it, what is it like? I don't know. Um, uh, a chew toy. Yeah, challenge yourself. Don't don't do a bone. Everybody does a bone in a dog's mouth. Uh, I say do a chew toy. Maybe, maybe like a a stuffed chew toy. Um, don't do a cat. I feel like that that'd be cliche. Um, yeah, just the stuff, two toys of some animal type, I'll let you be creative on that. And if you don't want to do any of that, I will not be offended. I feel like it's your drawing. Go for it. I thought you were going to put the drawing in the dog's mouth. I'm like, I totally read that wrong. <laughs> so you can, you can kind of see here that, um, you know, the, the process is that you just put the pigment down and then you kind of blend it in and it creates this tonal value. So like, obviously this area is a little bit lighter because it's catching the light. Um, there's other parts that are darker. I'll come back and reinforce some of those dark areas here in a moment. It's a lot like some of those charcoal uh, portraits that I've done where, you know, you're just trying to capture the light on this short hair dog's uh, coat. I was going to say skin, but. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I, I like it whenever new faces come in here. Like, I, I know Crump. I, we talk all the time, but, like, this might be the first time I've seen you in here. I think that's kind of cool. Appreciate it. Yeah. Like, you guys are the best because you guys are the ones that keep coming back. I think that's neat. Other people come and go. But... The people who keep coming back. I don't know, guys. I'm starting to think we're friends. I don't want to get all mushy on you and stuff, but I kind of like you guys. So, I, I ain't gonna lie, this is one of the, yeah, the tougher parts, because, like, you got this big field of color that you've got to fill in. Those parts are always, they feel a little more tedious than putting in the details. I really enjoy putting in details, these big fields of color. I just want to kind of sketch through it so quick and stuff, and sometimes that's not the best way to go about it. Because you do have to capture some information in these. Yeah, yeah, building muscle base, exactly. Anyway, you have to convey some information in these big fields of color. So, uh, again, you know, like light touch, it looks grainy, 
it's it's got an ugly phase that, that's why i like to call it there's always an ugly phase before you blend it in but then when you're blending it in you're being careful about how you're blending it in so that you can form those uh those muscle tones you know really it's just light and shadows over um skin and muscle and bones and this part here you're just putting down a bunch of bunch of uh pastel and then and it's kind of fun to um you're like building a dog in pieces right so you start with the head and you start and then when the neck and now you're building this torso whoops I just put a mark there when um anyway you're building it's, it's kind of like build a dog now i don't usually work this way i only work this way when i'm working on like i don't know super realistic pictures usually i just make a big old mess and then kind of carve out pieces uh this is a totally different way of doing things but i i would argue that this is better especially when you're doing like a um you know typically a two hour live stream and you don't know how much you're going to get done in that two hours i like to at least have a head done so that you guys can see that but it, it is interesting you're kind of like building a dog out of a page You know, somebody asks you what you do, you know, you don't say you're an artist. You say, I breathe life into paper or canvases or whatever it is that you work on. Because you're creating life on this page, you know? I mean, dog isn't going to, like, jump around or anything like that. It's not really alive, but it's certainly there. You created it out of nothing brought that dog into existence is that not like creating life so some of these areas i want to be darker so i kind of like lean on a little bit on the uh blending stump and then of course you know this is just the base layer you'll come back over it with more black or you know in this case some whites And because it's pastel, you, you see that I'm constantly like blowing away powder that isn't sticking to the uh, paper. But that process that I was talking about at the beginning of the video, that's a solid process for getting your pastel to stick to the uh, paper a little bit more. Um, applying that gesso. But I'll have a video about that tomorrow. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, David. Thanks, Lorraine. You guys are awesome. I appreciate y'all. Let's see. I'm gonna switch to the blue. So it's hard to see the colors in here, but there's like some blues in here as well as the blacks. Because it, it is reflecting the uh the uh sky and the sun and all that stuff. So It's funny the different types of dogs like sometimes i'm i'm spending a lot of time putting in a bunch of fur like little bristles of fur and stuff but these short-haired dogs i'm really just like crump said i'm drawing muscle and skin tone and not skin tone i mean you can't see the skin but um muscle tone and bones and structural features i guess i would say Through here, through here is actually like this part of, let's see, yeah, this part of the uh, thing, and then like this is like his, I guess, chest. And it's really just a, a slight shade difference between the two. It's, it's really kind of cool. Really, some of the detail is probably on the lines where two colors meet. So, like, the, you know, I'm not spending a lot of time on it now, but certainly as I finish up the picture and start looking for places to add detail, where the white meets the black, you know, you have some contrast there. So, 
that's like an excellent place to put in some little tufts of fur. Little things like that really sell the piece. So, essence of line. Put through here, it's a little much darker. And put down here. So, before I forget, is a lighter line. This should actually be blue. Yeah, this. Instead of doing everything white. So there's this little line of light where it's really catching the sun. And I'll make that brighter a little bit later on. That comes all the way up here like a little river just cutting through the body. And then it progresses into more body mass. Um, I'm going to add more shade and whatnot here when I get to but somebody asked about pencil sharpening earlier and really like this paper is so sanded with uh I guess pumice or whatever's in that gesso that uh it basically sharpens itself the pencils it's almost like working on stone I think there are actual bits of stone in that gesso like, I, I, I do think it's marble pumice, like marble powder or something like that. Like, I saw a tutorial on how you can make your own gesso, and part of that recipe actually involved uh, marble powder, which you can actually pick up at, like, some art stores, but it's like $4 a bag or whatever. But I'm worried about keeping things archival so that, like, they don't deteriorate over time. So I don't trust some of these recipes for rolling your own solutions. Hey, thank you. Set season where I have allergies, so let me. And back work. So, depending on like which direction you put your pencil marks, um, you can form a lot of that rip structure. So like notice how I'm following the contours of the body shape. So up here, I was kind of like drawing like this over here. I'm, I'm trying to follow the body shape. And the reason why is because like, I don't know, you don't have to draw every single individual line, really. You just kind of suggest body features. And if you put in your lines following the body contour, well, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of time developing a rib cage because it's already kind of basically there and you can just kind of work it until it really looks like a rib cage um some of the really fine artists back in the day like i don't know i don't know renaissance artists or whatever i can't think of any da vinci <laughs> um there was like a way of drawing that they all did like uh they call it like classical uh, classically taught or whatever like there's a way of drawing that everybody did back then and you know people still more or less do it the same way when you're when you're building form you are kind of um modeling and you know i've talked before about how it's kind of like sculpting really you're just sculpting with lines instead of clay. So you you see I've got this light midtone. Now I'm adding some shadows in here because the you know the dog isn't completely smooth. So the shadows come down over and somebody should give this dog some food. <laughs> 
But this is how greyhounds are supposed to look. They're supposed to be super thin. They're not supposed to be fat like my dogs. I took my dog to the vet. Um, bear, you guys have seen enough of Bear to notice it. It's not a very large dog. It's a mid-range dog. 70 pounds. She's like 70 pounds. Doctor said she's a little bit overweight and that I need to exercise her more. Now, conversely, my other dog, um, Guinness, I mean, he is like so hyperactive all the time that he's basically like, I don't know, like Flash. Uh, he just kind of vibrates and he he's never overweight just because he's constantly um constantly doing something he's always plotting things i don't know he, he's just he's like a little tweaker he's always just like twitching let's move some of this out um, I think the dog's really going to stand out when I actually start adding in some background. What time is it? Uh, maybe I'll s skip to that uh, before the end of the stream, just to kind of... Everything's so dark right now, but there there is supposed to be some lightness up here in the sky. So once I put that in, the contrast, I think, will really make the dog stand out. I wish I knew this dog's name. He told me what the name was and I completely forgot. And to me, that's like a professional embarrassment. I like to call the dogs by their names as I'm drawing them. Or at least I want to get into the habit of that. I feel like it's a courtesy, you know? Like if you're drawing a person and you're sitting across from them, you don't want to be like, hey, dude. <laughs> like you should know the person's name. If anything, drawing a portrait is sort of intimate, you know, like you are, you are staring at that person for long periods of time. Um, not intimate in a creepy way, just like, I mean, you're sharing a moment when you draw a, a portrait of somebody, you know, you should, you should know their name. I feel it's the same way with dogs, you know, here I am, I'm like, you know, basically doing a portrait of this dog, I should know the dog's name, just out of respect. No, I'm sorry, doggy. I don't know your name. If I did, I would tell everybody. I'm sure it's a pretty name. I remember it being a pretty name. I just don't remember what it was. I'm terrible with names. You can tell me your name, I'll forget it tomorrow. It's not that I don't care about you. I just not good with names. Cool. All right, so now he kind of looks weird. Like, I feel like at least I should do his rump. But just carving out a dog in stages. Um, none of this is finished, by the way. I'm going to be adding little tweaks into the, to this until I call it done, you know, um, little details. It's just getting the essence of the dog in there and then coming back and adding more. Kind of carving this dog up into like tonal chunks like anywhere there's a separation of shadows that's kind of the part that i leave to draw later oh bye mama q have a good one appreciate you stopping by Yeah, anytime there's like tonal value changes and stuff, that's a good place to kind of like carve out a chunk. Um, again, I, I don't usually work this way. I usually um, try to get all the dog or, or all of the thing I'm drawing in and then come back and add details over it. It's just, you know, because 
I'm doing this live stream and I want to keep your your visual interest going. Um, I think that that's probably the best way to go about it. There's a lot of muscular pieces here. Sometimes I don't know what this looks like on camera until afterwards because like I see it on my computer, but it's like super small. It's basically a thumbnail. So I don't know how much of um, the details actually translate to you guys, but that's why I share these things on the community tab when I'm done. Just so like if you're interested, you can see what some of the details actually were. I really like this way of doing dogs, um, dog portraits. Uh, these pastel pencils are amazing. And even though I could probably get similar work out of a, um, out of colored pencils or like even paint, I'm sure I could figure out how to paint a dog. Um, I just love pastels. I like that you can just blend like this. Like if I was doing a charcoal, not, not charcoal. Uh, charcoal actually it's very similar to pastels it's just black and white um if i was doing colored pencils yeah, that's correct if i was doing colored pencils to get this kind of blending i would need to use like some sort of solvent or or something or like really press hard down into the paper hey thanks vertigo this is one of jet Dave's dogs basically if you see me doing a greyhound it's one of Jeff's Dave's dogs. Because I have never met a Greyhound. I've never met anybody who had a Greyhound other than uh, Jeff's Dave. No, that's not true. Wait, I have seen a Greyhound before. Yeah, a friend of mine actually had a Greyhound. I just didn't remember. Okay, never mind. If you see me doing a Greyhound, it's probably Jeff's Dave's dog. But it may not be Jeff's Dave's dog because I have encountered Greyhounds before. I just forgot. I need to do like a Great Dane, like a big old Great Dane dog. That'd be cool. I was mistaken. I have seen Greyhounds because a friend of mine had one um, and she brought it to work one time. Uh, Breezy. I think that, that was the name of that dog. It was a super gray uh, greyhound, like all gray, like uh, gray eyes, gray dog, everything gray. Yeah, Dave's pretty cool. Dave is pretty cool. Always happy to draw pictures for people who appreciate them. Um, uh, you know, Dave's been super nice about the uh, picture I drew for him before. Very generous in his praise. Thank you, Dave. So, happy to do more. I have noticed that Bear is getting jealous because I haven't drawn Bear yet. A Great Dane sticking his head out the roof of your, uh, like your sunroof. That would be kind of cool. The big old Marmaduke dog. Um, my brother either has or had a Great Dane. I don't know if he still has one. I think he does. But I haven't been to his house in a while. And whenever he visits me, he doesn't bring the dog. So I think he has a Great Dane. So, figure I'll come back to the lakes after I get some more detail in these upper parts. I've got my pencils here. This is my first time using this set of pencils, so I don't know what I've got. 
in terms of color. The thing is, when I use these like lighter blues, I think it's because like everything is so blue, they come out almost white. So I guess that's just the way it is. By the way, hi, uh, Husker Du. That's a cool name. I try to try to say hi to everybody who comes in. Sometimes I I miss people. I mean, if you guys are gonna take the time to <laughs> to watch me, I should at least acknowledge your presence. So. Um, show appreciation that you guys are here because I really am appreciative. I, I, you know, otherwise I'd be sitting here talking to myself. Like I, I draw pictures on my own without an audience and stuff, but it's a lot more fun when you guys are hanging out, talking to me. Gives me something to do. Give me a chance to answer any questions if you guys have any about, you know, drawing process or whatever. Life, movies. I mean, I keep bringing it up, but if you guys haven't seen Spider-Man Across the uh, Spider-Verse yet, you are missing something special. That is such a good shot, uh, movie. Hey, thanks, Richard. Thanks, David. Yeah, like I, I mentioned before, but that that movie, uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, is basically made for artists. Like, you could take a screen grab of any piece of that film, just like the first one. The, the first one was like a work of art as well. But you can take, like, a screen grab of any portion of that movie, hang it up on your wall, and it's going to look beautiful. I don't know how they did it. I hope they make more movies like this. So um, they actually are. So like um, the next one, I think this very highly stylized that I am really looking forward to seeing is uh, the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. That looks awesome. It's like, once again, it's like this highly stylized type of uh, film. Um, <laughs> do the wrong <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is this highly stylized uh, looking movie. Um, it reminds me of, uh, not not Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reminds me of it, but the art style. The art style of uh, really stylizing these animations reminds me of uh, Arcane on uh, Netflix. That is a great show as well. If you get a chance to watch that, I highly recommend it. It's just a work of art. Um, what's her name off of that movie? Uh, Jinx is like one of my favorite characters. So, like you can see in this coat, like just by adding a little bit of shadow. And so, what's great about these pastel pencils is it's just you can easily add layers over layers, right? And it really starts adding a lot of detail. So, whereas some of this just kind of felt all like one note. Just adding a little bit of highlight there creates this whole new feature on the neck. You know? That's what's great about... It. Like, you can do it with colored pencils as well, but, I mean, I just like how easy it is to work with these pastel pencils. Oops. I don't think that was supposed to be that bright. Sometimes I make mistakes. I don't know why I point out that I make mistakes. Like, you guys wouldn't know. I should just hide the mistakes. But see, when I point out the mistakes, we get to share the mistakes. Now there are mistakes. Good job putting this mistake in my picture. Thanks, guys. A little tuft of fur back here on the back of the neck.
I'm really glad that I decided to do, um, you know, live stream of my art this year. I could have gone the other way where I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to spend some time getting better at art, but I'm not going to tell anybody. I really don't think that that's the way to progress, you know, like if you really want to like improve a skill or like just improve anything, do it in public, you know. I've said before, like, have other people hold you accountable. Have other people tell you your art sucks, right? Because once people tell you your art sucks, you know, you're like, well, I can do better than that. Um, and, and, you know, that's how you progress. Like, yeah, I mean, obviously. Way, way bigger than Eric Sloan. <laughs> I appreciate that, Crump. It's not true. I'm, I'm sure. Um, honestly, there's a lot of talented people in that in that community. Um, I am way surprised. Like, um, uh, what's her face? Um, uh, she does the uh, the watercolor uh, pictures. She puts some flowers up. They're beautiful. She didn't post all that much. Uh, Snowy, I think, is her name. Something like that. It has snow in it. But. Um, no, she's, she's the real deal. She is a, uh, she is, a, I mean, if she's not a professional artist, she should be. Uh, P. Denver creates some beautiful art. Um, well, hell, everybody that I did on that showcase, all great people. So I appreciate the compliment, but I don't think that I am alone in creativity here. You, there are some really creative people. But Forrest Finn just appreciated people who appreciated him. And I was a super fanboy, you know. I wasn't like the annoying kind. I, I sent him emails, but I don't think I ever sent him any annoying emails. But... You know, appreciated the dude. I thought he was a good role model. Like, not everybody thinks so, but in my mind, uh, he, was a, he was a person to admire, and, you know, he was pretty inspirational. I wish I was drawing pictures back then. That would have been cool to get some advice from him about that. I, would, I wasn't... I wasn't drawing pictures like I am now. Honestly, you should go back. If Vertigo's still in the room, he can tell you. He was on my first live stream. Uh, oh, and Richard was as well. Uh, yeah, obviously, because I, I, I sent the picture to Richard. Um, I, I think I've gotten better over the last couple of months. You know, My first picture was okay, but not all that great. Like... If you can scrub backwards, you can just see some of the detail being added here is really helping define this face, you know, and, and it's just layers upon layers upon layers, but it really starts coming together at some point. Like there's a tipping point where it goes from being washed out to being, wow, that actually looks like the, the, the dog a little bit, or at least it looks realistic. Um, I don't think I'm there yet, but there are there really is this tipping point where things feel unfinished and then suddenly they start coming together. <laughs> I've drawn so many dogs. I should really draw a bunch of dogs playing poker. I love that. That's the comment of the night. I know everybody else has made great comments, but I like, I like that one. I really should draw a bunch of dogs playing poker. I'd have one of them cheating. Like a like an ace up their sleeve or something. That'd be kind of cool. He's not... These snouts really are like just like arrows, you know, like if you bumped into it, it would probably like cut you. That's how sharp they are.
little bit of white in its face, a lot of gray. So even though I'm adding a bunch of white, I'm probably going to tone it down a little bit with some uh, gray after afterwards. <laughs> ah, that's a good comment, Vertigo. Ah, my nemesis comes back to bite me again. So, what I'm hearing from you, Vertigo, is that I won. I won the art challenge. I beat Vertigo at something, yay. Now, so what sucks about this Vertigo is I think that um, that uh, if you actually did apply yourself to it, you actually would be good at art just because that's that's the impression I get of you is that like once you put yourself to something, yeah, you just get it done. So don't sell yourself short. I, these are, um, I should, all right, so in all seriousness, um, these are actually learnable skills so like i know that some people talk about like innate talent and there probably is some of that in in creativity and stuff like that but drawing drawing is a learnable skill like um i think that i'm writing off of uh some innate you know just uh, being able to observe things and that's how i'm getting by here but you can actually learn best practices to uh draw and and actually become better over time you know people do that like there are people professional artists working in the industry whatever industry it is um who had no talent they they drew stick figures and stuff like that and then they went to school they actually learned the the principles and they learned you know basically how to draw and they're out there creating work for disney or whatever you know working on movies um it is a learnable skill there is nothing about drawing that has to be in a talent you know um i mean clearly you know people don't people aren't born being able to draw they just continue practicing and practicing and practicing and honestly i i, I think that's the secret the more you draw the better you get it's as simple as that you want to learn how to draw? It's like writing. So like uh, Crump's in here. He's a writer. He, he can back me up on this. Uh, if you want to be a better writer, read more books. It's as simple as that. You want to be a better writer? Read more books. And, um, you know, there's just something about the act of doing it that makes you better. So, yeah. I mean, there's some technical things and, and stuff like that. Like, for example, uh, I talked about uh, my my technique here at the beginning of this that I wouldn't be able to create this picture if the paper wasn't textured. Like, I, I went through the process of making this a textured paper. It feels like sandpaper. You can't hear it. But when I scratch it, it's, it's like scratching sandpaper. That is stuff that, um, you know, you're not just going to be able to, like, do you get you got to learn that kind of stuff like that's actually something that you have to hear from somebody and try it and make it work um but you know the rest of it the actual hand-eye coordination that's a that's something that you can practice and get better at it's not like people are able uh, like born able to like play an instrument either you know you practice 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 and you just get better at playing an instrument that was my other thing. I was supposed to learn how to play the violin this year. I bought lessons and all that stuff. That thing's still sitting there collecting dust. That was like the only thing I asked for for Christmas. Like, hey, can you uh, can you give me strings for my violin that I haven't touched in years and also give me a Udemy class uh, for playing the violin? And sure enough, I got that for Christmas and I, took, I, I did like one of the lessons and I learned how to hold my violin and that's it. That's all I've done. I think, I think I'm at a good stopping point on this eye where I feel like if I do too much more, not eye, face, I feel like if I do too much more, I run the risk of overworking it. So. 
uh, it's a good stopping point on the uh, facing. Move on down to the legs. Yeah, definitely, definitely, you have to, you have to keep at it, you know. I mean, some people, I don't know, like, they'll never progress, but it's not, it's not because they can't, I don't think, like, I think that, I think that anybody can create art. Now, maybe not everybody's going to be drawing, you know, but anybody can be creative. Um, I, I joke sometimes, but I'm actually serious. Uh, there are people out there doing phenomenal work with stick art, you know, some really awesome stick art. So if, if your complaint is, well, all I can do is draw stick art, stick people or whatever. Hey, be the best stick art pe person you can, um, learn how to animate stick art because some of that stuff is awesome where people have, um, I don't know, stick men fighting each other with lightsabers and stuff like that. That's cool stuff. So, if your complaint is that all you can do is draw uh, stick figures, then I don't see that as a valid complaint. You can still create things. Really, I'm just switching back and forth between the same pencils. I'm probably not going to get this all done during this live stream. I realize that now. I can probably get m much of the dog finished up, but I also wanted to put in like background and, you know, things like that. A little bit of a sky, a little bit of ground. So. I think this is going to be a multi-session thing for me. It, maybe not like a multi-stream. Like, I'll give you guys fresh content next time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't I don't think I'm going to finish this in one thing. The, the funny thing is, the first uh, picture I did for uh, Dave, <laughs> I ended up doing three different versions of that scene. Um, the first one I wasn't happy with. The second one I wasn't happy with. Finally, I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it in colored pencils and stuff. I wish I had these pencils because I kind of want to do it a fourth time. I already sent it to him, but I kind of want to draw another one. Not Spot's such a great dog, though. Let's see. Dog had your phone. She better not have any play your own flute. It's a violin, not a flute. That's what I want to learn how to play. I love the sound of violins. Um, I appreciate uh, people who can play violins. Uh, that's why I asked for lessons on, on the violin. Plus, I have one. I've had it for many years. I just never learned to play it. Um, I did... <laughs> this is kind of lame. I, I did play a clarinet. Like, no, no disrespect to people who play clarinets, but I didn't want to play the clar clarinet. I played the clarinet, like, in sixth grade. I, I don't remember how to play it, but back in the sixth grade, I was in band, and I played the clarinet. And the reason I played the clarinet is because my parents wouldn't get me a brass instrument because I wore braces and somebody told them that you can't play a brass instrument when you have braces. Now, what people probably meant is that you can't play like a trumpet or like a trombone or something like that when you have braces because you have to put that mouthpiece up against your, your mouth. Um, what I wanted to play was a saxophone and a saxophone is not that much different than a clarinet when it comes to that kind of stuff. So. I think maybe they use that as an excuse not to buy the saxophone because the saxophone costs more. So I can't really complain. 
But back then, like I'm sure now, like people play the clarinet and they're like, oh man, that's cool. And you're like a cool dude, like blues and all that stuff. Uh, but back then, when I was in the sixth grade, uh, they looked at it as like, wow, you're like a clarinet player and you're a dude. So it was a little bit different back then. And, um, you know, I was the only dude who was playing the clarinet. There were like two other girls in the band that, uh, two other girls, there were two girls, um, in the band that played uh, clarinet. I was the only dude stuck playing the clarinet, but I don't know. It was, it was okay. I remember being good at it. I just don't remember how to play it. Oh, cool, Rum Dog. Hey, if you guys haven't checked it out, Rum Dog has a channel where he has a uh, a dog that is, is a very cute dog and stuff, and he kind of chronicles the uh, his adventures with his dog. It's it, it's very cute. I encourage you guys to check it out. I like to uh, I like to mention when people in my chat have channels whenever I remember to. I don't remember often. Little details on this leg, it's cool. I feel like there should be more going on over here and I just haven't gotten to it yet. So I'm going to switch back to this this area over here that I've been painfully neglecting. Yeah, so like, I mean, honestly, I think that people, uh, dudes that play the clarinet now are cool um, because like, I'm into like, I don't know, jazz and stuff. And certainly there's a lot of cool dudes that play the clarinet that also play like jazz and stuff. I, I think my appreciation for jazz music came from that um, that show on uh, HBO called Treme. Uh, I enjoyed that. Like, I, I haven't been to New Orleans yet, um, but I would love to visit there. And it's mostly because, well, it's, it's mostly because of that show and also being a fan of like Anne Rice novels. But anyway, uh, point is, um, there are a lot of like really great male sac like clarinet players and you know if you went up to them and you said oh, you're a dude you shouldn't be playing the clarinet i mean they rightfully should smack the shit out of you but back then back when i was a little little kid it was it was rare at least at least in uh you know where i went to school and stuff maybe it was different in um places like new orleans or whatever but where i went to school it was it was odd for a uh for a, a dude to uh, play clarinet and of course when in sixth grade if you do anything odd you're singled out you know like you have to conform and do it exactly what everybody else is doing or else they think you're weird but i don't know i was a weird dude anyway so what difference does it make if they weren't picking on me for playing the clarinet i'm sure they'd be picking on me because i had the wrong shoes or wrong clothes or whatever I don't know if I cared back then. Part of me thinks that I kind of cared, but not really. It's in sixth grade. I I don't think I cared about popularity or fitting in or anything like that. Night, road dog. Yeah, I'll probably uh, go ahead and call this stream done here before too long, just to be respectful of people's weekdays. You know, it's a little different when it's Friday and, you know, if it goes on to like three hours or whatever. But I'm not going to be able to finish this picture in one night anyway. So, I, I think it's pretty good progress, though. I mean, really, it's just like, you, you end up painting the same picture. They, they call it pastel uh, pictures, paintings. Um, you end up painting the same picture over and over and over again 
like just by all the different layers so like even though it's one picture you end up you end up kind of working it um at least three times you know your shadows your midtones and your highlights and stuff but really it's probably a lot more than that I'm trying to gauge how long it takes to do a pet portrait this way in case I ever get the chance to do one for people. Uh, again, my my ultimate grand plan is that one day I will be doing pet portraits for people who have lost their pets. It's kind of like, you know, a way to help them grieve because I know that when I've lost my pets, I cared about things like that, so. Anyway, that's my ultimate goal. We'll get there someday. We'll get there, guys. We'll get there, right, puppy? Said the P word. Can't say the P word or the P word in this house. And if I say puppy, you think I'm talking about them. A lot of little, little, little pieces in here. A lot of detail. The worst part is I kind of want to make a lot of progress on this picture because like the last time I did a picture for just Dave, I started in March and I just recently sent it to him. He's like going to have zero confidence that I'm ever going to finish this picture if I don't make a ton of progress in one sitting. He's going to be like, yeah, okay, Jeremy. Yeah, you'll, you'll get that picture done someday. I love the detail here. Like honestly, guys, this is this is starting to turn out pretty cool. I love it when I do something that I'm happy with. You know, other people, other people say they like things, and it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know, are they just being nice? But sometimes, sometimes I do something that I'm happy with. Um, I was pretty happy with my my dog Guinness's picture that I did earlier. Um, a bit breaks. Turn that down a bit. I'm very happy with this too. Anyway, um, I'm going to pivot here, and I think uh, I'm going to work on some of that background just to just to get something in there real quick, and then I think I'll call. The stream done because I did want to kind of force myself to do a background by starting it see how that works so like if you start doing something you're committed to it and you have to finish it at some point now I'm not saying I'm going to finish it today but I kind of wanted to at least draw All right, have a good one, Richard. Yeah, people are starting to bell, so I probably should uh, probably should cut this short here in a few minutes. But I have to put a thumbnail on this uh, video, so I need to actually have at least a part of it done so I can add it to the thumbnail. All right, so that's going to be sky eventually. Let me add a little bit of the ground here, and then we'll call this done for now. And then I'll come back and finish it later off camera, and then I'll post it up and let you guys see it. But I did kind of want there to be grass here. Um, this is 
I don't think it's on a beach, but it is on the coastline. You don't see the beach. So there's going to be like a bunch of sand down here and stuff. I'll get to that eventually. But yeah, I think that's good enough. Probably. I know it's weird. Like the legs aren't there and stuff like that. But I think there's enough in the face to call this um, done for now. And we'll come back to it. Well, I'll come back to it. And then I'll post it up for you guys to see when I'm done with it. Yeah, every time I say I'm done, I start tinkering. This wine is good. All right. Yeah, so it's it's been like two hours, 15 minutes. It's a weeknight. Should probably call this done. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit, um, just so that you guys can see some of these details, because you guys have patiently, like, been hanging out here. I don't know if it's going to let me. Yeah, I don't, I think if I keep tinkering with it, it's probably going to freeze up. All right, so I'm going to skip that. I'll just post it on um you know the community channel when when it's done let me uh wait a moment for my computer to catch up i think i i kind of confused it yeah i think this is a good stopping point all right so um i am gonna call this done let me switch back to me all right so um again i appreciate you guys hanging out with me uh i like this yeah my dogs are getting riled up but somehow they know when uh when things are done but um yeah i think my camera's glitching anyway so i'm gonna call this done i appreciate you guys hanging out with me um i'll be back friday probably with a different dog picture or some other wildlife picture because i'm really enjoying doing those uh probably in pastel pencil again just because i'm enjoying that but Anyway, um, I'll finish this up. I'll put it up on the community tab when it is done. Uh, in the meantime, um, I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll show you guys a zoomed in picture of the uh, the face on the community tab. In any case, thank you for hanging out with me. I'll see you guys Friday. Have a good one. Bye. Oh, um, real quick, um, I am posting a video tomorrow of my paper preparation technique uh, for my. Uh, this is this is my dog Guinness that uh, well I, this is my dog Guinness that uh, I showed at the beginning of this show. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna do a video where I'm walking through how this picture came about. So look for that tomorrow. Um, and uh, this time for real, I'm out. So you guys have a good one. See you Friday. Bye.